This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I am so excited. I have Carrie Minter. She's the CEO of Carrie's Pilates, a self made entrepreneur. I've read about you. You're like me, you're like the best known, unknown person in your business. It's amazing. You know, I tell people all the time, like, you know, I have to be honest, I've never heard of you. I said, well, there's 4.2 billion people on the internet. I imagine most people haven't heard of us, but they should. And that's why I wanted you on the playbook because you have really overcome some big challenges and just with a positive attitude, uh, been able to build what I think is a great business. And I think we have even greater things to see. So thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So Carrie, you know, you didn't start off as a Pilates person. I did not. <laughs> you're, no. a young, you're a young model. Yes, yes. And, you know, a lot of people don't know how difficult modeling is. <laughs> right, right. It, it, like literally, right. like I, I mean, I started doing TV and, and you know, as, as an agent and then myself, TV and movies. And the one word that I learned through the modeling side of things and acting is patience. Yes, yes. This is just a long, long day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And yes. you were really young when you started. I did. I was. I started when I was 15 and, um, you know, in my early 20s. And, and even now I do some stuff. But, you know, of course, my main focus is the business, you know. So, um, so yeah. So, started and, out young. <laughs> and through that, do you think it caused you to have some challenges that other young people didn't have? Probably. Oh, I'm sure. Absolutely. Which you ones know? do you think were the biggest ones that you've learned? I think probably just like dealing with rejection all the time, you know, and just not, you know, looking a certain way or being a certain size or being like um, definitely that, you know, um, but, you know, it was kind of hard on my self-esteem. It was good on my self-esteem in some ways, but also hard. So um, I'm much more happy um, with where I am now with like my business and not having to go to those castings every day and deal with all that. <laughs> do you do you still get your feelings hurt when you get a no? Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, of course. Um, I am pretty sensitive, but um, but I don't, you know, I don't let it like, you know, ruin my day or, you know, but yeah, I, I don't like hearing no, but, you know, I mean, who does? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I personally try to teach people that you're a no just puts you that much closer to a yes, right? Exactly. Just frame like, keep it. going. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would tell people, think if there's 25, you were just 25 no's from a yes, how happy you would be when you got a no. Right. 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 But you did progress. W what age were you when you decided to start your own company? I was, I want to say, um, I started my own right before I turned, I was about 30. 30. 30 yes. <laughs> and what was the scariest part about that? Oh my gosh, everything. So I actually uh, was Best just, answer ever. Everything. <laughs> I was just going through a really uh, traumatic divorce that was really, really hard. I was married for about seven years. And um, so... You know, starting a new company, um, really being motivated in my career while well, all that was unfolding and it was just like a really emotional time for me. And I wasn't in the best mental health state. So that was probably really difficult. But um, I, I managed to stick it through. And uh, the first couple of years were really hard, you know, not making much profit. Yeah. And, uh, but I, you know, kept going and eventually, you know, learned to hire really great people. And I have such an amazing team now. I mean, I'm so grateful and happy with, you know, how far we've come, how far I've come. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and you should be because not only have you come a long way for a successful business, but personally you had to overcome all these different challenges. Like you said, you, you dealt with rejection at a young age. You had like anyone else, it's bad enough to be a teenager or in your twenties self-esteem wise, but right. being a model and having to deal with that type of subjectivity is very difficult. And you did deal with anxiety and, yes. you know, and frustration and, and uh, depression even. Yes. Oh, and, absolutely. And, yes. You know, my main mission in life is to help people learn to be happy. In fact, yes. I, yeah. before I'm gone, I want to empower over a billion people to be happy by teaching them yeah. the ways to deal with stress, anxiety, frustration, depression, even mm -hmm. a little bit of drug use. Mm -hmm. uh, or, mm -hmm. and, and I have yeah. a quick question because you, you have admitted that you know you had a little bit of a drug problem and depressed. Is that correct? Yes, I've definitely I, dealt with um, you know a, a share of addiction issues. Yeah, you know, and so, off and on. but do you think? 
because I always wonder about this, because just to share, right? Like I've right. had my own difficulties as right. well with addiction and screwing up my own life uh, early <laughs> on. I'm just a lot older, so everybody forgets, you know, when I was 20 something. <laughs> but um, but more, more, would you think the drugs cause the, the you know, the addiction size cause the anxiety and frustration and depression? Or do you think people take drugs because they're anxious and depressed. I think it goes both ways. I think even if you don't do any any drugs, you know, you can be prone to anxiety and depression. I think um, you know, it happens to to everyone. And so what I've really found for me is I'm really glad and and grateful that I found something I loved in a career that is health and fitness and about being healthy because I don't know where I would be if I didn't have this business. Um, and my main goal too is to inspire people. But um, but yeah, as far as I think it happens, it can happen to everyone, you know, whether you use drugs or you don't. Or And it's true. Know. I mean, there's, yeah. the numbers are ridiculous with depression yeah. and anxiety for non-users as well. But your, your business, Pilates, is really a holistic approach to life. And I can't tell you how many people that I have that are hyper successful that I'm expecting them to give this great advice to young people and they always start with health. Yeah. In fact, I remember I was speaking at Tulane Law School in this super like president of HBO or somebody was there with me and one of the freshmen, they were like, what's the best piece of advice that you could give us? And I thought for sure it was going to be something about school or business. Yeah. And it was just straight out, find something that you love to do yeah. uh, exercise-wise an hour a day yeah. for the rest of your life. Ab absolutely. And that's you know? kind of what you inspire people to do is just to be fit. Right, right, and healthy, and, and for your mental health, you know, or, or even take it back to your childhood, like what were things that you enjoyed doing growing up, like what really made you happy? And to that end, if you take me through from like your teenage perspective to your 20s to now your 30s, what made you happy in each one of those kind of periods of your life, and how has that evolved? Um, oh gosh, in each period, of, I mean, I think what makes me the most happy is just being hardworking, being grateful, being productive. Um, through, I'm definitely the happiest now in my 30s than I ever was in my 20s or my teenage years. You know, I just think it just, I like to say it keeps getting better and better. It will. You know, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be the best day of your life. <laughs> right? And today is the best so far. This is the year. <laughs> it is. Every year is the year. Um, and, th and through that, what, you know, as you started to build a business, I, your ex-husband was an entrepreneur. Yes, he was. And did he teach you anything about that side of it? Or did you kind of stay removed just modeling? and? So I that? actually did. He didn't really teach me anything, but I did learn from his work ethic. You know, um, one thing I learned from being married to him is is he, he was a really hard worker. And, you know, every morning he was up 5, 6 a.m. and, you know, started his day. And um, I really looked up to that. And... Um, you know, so I, I respect that. And he definitely has always had like a hustle. We don't talk anymore, of course, but he's always <laughs> had a hustler mentality. So if I could say anything, you know, about him, it would be that. So I did see that. So that definitely helped me being in my 20s and and watching that. Um, it was inspiring. And what time do you wake up now? Uh, well, I don't like to get up at uh, 5 a.m. I mean, I'm more like I like to start my day like around like 8, 9, but I will work late. Like I think I do my best work um, at night. You know, I'm more of like a night owl. So I like to, you know, answer emails. And I mean, if it were up to me, everything would start around like noon. But, yes, um... You and I would be perfect business partners because <laughs> right? I'd finish and you'd wake up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, they do say the key is to get up really early, but that's just never really. I mean, I'll get up early if I have to, of course. There's so many mornings where I'm up really early, but um. But on an average day, I'm probably probably anywhere between like seven and, and eight thirty. Yeah. And what about time management? You know, time management is so important. Do you have any tricks or things that you've learned? You know, as you've progressed. Yeah, so I have the best studio manager. She's actually here today, and she, for Christmas, got me an agenda. Um, and so I write everything in my agenda, and I just try to plan everything out, like, day-to-day, -day, like, from, okay, 8 to 9, I'm going to do this, 9 to 10, and just have that day max full, um, you know, meetings, phone calls. Time management is so important. I think if you work for yourself and you don't have a structured schedule, it can get, especially me, I work from home, I can get really distracted with, like, my dog or like the laundry or like you know Instagram. so it's, it, it's totally <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, I know that feeling and I'm key. old so yeah. having a set schedule you know and, and writing things down and actually seeing it written down I think really helps and 
the stress of a business, now what most people don't understand, if as you've dealt with anxiety and depression, the stress of a business can equally bring out some of those feelings. Do you still ever feel completely stressed or anxious oh, or depressed? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. and, and how, how do you, how do you deal with it goes. now? With Because you have such a happy personality <laughs> or you're like bubbling and positive and gracious. How do you deal with it when like you feel like depression or anxiety coming on? You know, different ways. Um, I, I want to say working out is really good. Calling a friend, you know, talking to someone really helps. Um, you know, having... Um, I think human interaction is really important and not, you know, just being alone too much. Um, or even if you're really upset and you need to, you know, <laughs> um, just be upset for the day. Tomorrow's a new day. I think the biggest lesson is uh, the biggest thing, the best thing you can do is to just keep moving forward. You know, even if you had a shitty day, if everything fell apart the next day, just get up and just keep going. and Don't stop. Don't ever give up. That's right. <laughs> The persistent side of it. Now, yes. why Pilates? So you're sitting there as a young entrepreneur, and you know I'm thinking when I'm starting businesses, crowded spaces, or even a more antiquated mode of of exercise. It's been around a longer time than some of these kooky things that are all out there. So you have such a successful business. Why did you choose Pilates though? So I started doing Pilates in my early 20s, and it was the first workout I did that I felt like really changed my body. Like I really noticed a big difference, and I felt so much stronger, and I just felt like it really worked. And um, so that just kind of worked for me. But now the way the studio is going, I mean, we have a cardio room. We sell juice. We sell coffee. We have a recovery station, a stretching station. We're about to start our cardio classes. So it's kind of uh, what I'm launching now is like a one-stop wellness center where you can just get everything you need. Would you franchise out or build out um, locations? Yes, actually, I wanted, um, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I want to have carry studios everywhere and then also, you know, sell. I just launched my new line of equipment called the Mentor Method. Nice. So it's a big machine, a Pilates machine, and uh, you can do all kinds of stuff on it. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Now, <laughs> you know, going from running a business like the Pilates studio to actually productizing it is two separate things. Yes. Where did you find the knowledge base or skills to, you know, do that? Because it's not any, for those that are listening, right, it's just not easy to go and create your own product and method of, of exercise. Right, right. Um, just by seeking out the best people in the field, you know, um, and, and finding those people and working with them. And it might take a while, like developing this Pilates machine has honestly taken, I, I hate to say, but maybe like three years because we made one prototype. It didn't come out right. We had to make some changes and you have setbacks and things happen. So it took a little more time than expected, but we finally perfected it. So um, I think just finding... Um, you know, the best people to work with you and who, who specialize in, in those type of things that you're looking to do. You know, a lot of times we talk about finding the best people and I would say surround yourself with the right people and the right ideas. And then I'll get a ton of questions saying, yeah, but where do I find the right people? Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, very obscure to say, well, I got to find the best people that can help me manufacture this people piece of equipment that's aligned with Pilates. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you give to people that are looking for mentorship? that are looking for mentors. Or where I, to find the best people. Where to find, I mean, just, I think doing your research, you know, asking around, doing your research. And um, you mean online, is that where you? On, yeah. Online research is mm -hmm. a wonderful, you know, and, and meeting with different people, looking at their references, their resources. Uh, yeah, just really getting out there and. And who and, did you who did you end up finding? Was so, it well, so, what type of person? So I an engineer, an engineer, an engineer yes, yeah, a manufacturer, yes. And yes. did you just describe the product to that engineer, and then they gave a rendering and moved from there? Yes, basically, we you know had to create you know like a CAD file, three D print. So it was it was definitely a process. Um, so uh, so I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, as we kind of finish up, it's it's really fun because time everything takes longer than what we think, right? right. And you talked oh about, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> you think you're going to have this done. I was like so ready. And then I'm like, oh, I'm like embarrassed to say, well, this took me three years. Yeah, but don't be. Because I mean, also just, you know, getting to profitability. And I always tell people that you have to look at the acceleration and growth while you're getting there. And right. the people like you that don't believe in quitting, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's through challenges mentally, physically, or spiritually, 
you basically train people to not quit, right? To be as right. fit as possible, to have the consistent, persistent pursuit of whatever their potential is. And, but you've lived it yourself. I can see all the different things that you were describing. N nothing in your life really happened overnight. Right. Although right. you're so young, <laughs> you know, I'm sure as I see like a lot of people are like, oh, you know, She's just an incredible, carries an overnight success. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like seven, <laughs> no. 17 years of success it takes. Um, yeah. For those people that are thinking about quitting, you know, where do you go on those days where you're like, oh, you know, like employees in overhead, what am I doing? You know, this product didn't work. Or, you know, how do you have that Rocky or Rudy type of attitude <laughs> that, you know what, as long as I can look up, I can get up. Right. Well, I pray a lot. You know, I have um, a, a pretty close relationship with God and I um, have good friendships. And, you know, like I said, just, you know, talking to a friend and just believing in yourself. I think, um, you know, you have to be like your your biggest cheerleader. You know, you have to think, you know, there's a difference between being confident and being cocky, of course. But like if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect anyone else to believe in you? So. I think just, you know, just having that persistent attitude and just, you know, sometimes things, great, great things in life take a little bit of time. I don't think anything really happens overnight. Yeah, so just very rarely. Nothing good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, your Pilates studio is a phenomenal one. You are a phenomenal entrepreneur. It's just Thank been a pleasure so to much. have you. You're Talk, I'm going to name this one the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Be happy here with Carrie Minter and David Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.